What is up, down, and sideways, you lovely individuals? Welcome back. It's League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you viewers for another epi as we continue with some summer highlights, LPL, LCK, and the absolute domination, steamroll, obliteration, slaughter. How many words can you put together for what Gen G continues to do? Seems like they've only leveled up in the summer split. The latest victim is a now 0-3. KT Rolster RIP. I will give you a capitalized W to throw into the things that you can describe Gen G with right now in this current meta. I don't know you're ever going to be able to describe them with anything but that big victory W across the board for Gen G. Interesting little series here against KT Rolster. I think you can look at game one, and, and I think one of the best things to watch from that very first game is deft making a great play against pays and, and the rest of gen g and finding some pushback for kt the problem is then you look at the scoreboard and you realize oh we're you're significantly down gold at this point kt wins it, like two different team fights early on and you're thinking wow they're looking good they're competing they're down for k gold I, I don't even know how it's possible it's that unfortunate situation that happens every now and then where you do get those turnaround fights. You do find that bounce back. But then you go to that next objective and you go, okay, we, you know, we got him last time. I'm sure we're going to have another close fight here. We're going to get it. And you just get blown out of the water because you're reminded that, oh, yeah, the wallets came through once again. It's not enough to bridge the gap. All these type of things still in control. Genji finds that way. And they find their way in game one because game two is even more in control from the Gen G squad. And does anyone have more fun playing League of Legends than the hands on Blitzcrank? <laughs> oh my God. Fine. Trying to predict flashes with these hooks every time and then just coasting a Rift Herald around the jungle to his ultimate death and then laughing about it. That's just the state Gen G's in right now. That's, that's exactly how you can be when you also, you got the rest of the members of Gen G playing the way that they do you can play that loosey-goosey that chaos style of blitzcrank when you have pays backing you up as well one of the things that we have talked about a lot of the time throughout the early points in the year having him be involved being an active player on this gen g team you're getting that firepower and certainly more than enough firepower to sink the kt battleship this series it feels like every series now somebody on gen g goes deathless Today, it happened to be Keen in the top lane because he had the Keen Sante and then the Udir after Sante gets banned, which means he's just a beefy boy who's never going down. But it's hard to keep track of who's performing well in all these matches. Double Zyra game for Canyon, and okay, maybe you could have banned it in game two. It doesn't matter. There's so many AP junglers this guy can play now. How do you beat? This Gen G team with what is possible for their playstyle right now. You have Keen in the top side. He seemingly has an endless buffet of tanky champions to play. Never mind. Hey, you want to play something a little bit more damage? You a little bit more up? You got the Rumble right there and waiting for him to play in the top side. Canyon, he's playing whatever the heck he wants all the way through. Rocking the Zyra jungle today. Really, I uh, think that that is, again, still one of the very interesting picks that you can rock in the jungle. And Tiz does take someone to the level, towards the level of Canyon, to make it work and pull off. Mid lane, almost everything open there for Chovy. But, of course, you can get a real comfort pick of the Corky. You can throw that in there. Pays down in the bottom lane with Ezreal. And, of course, Lahens is free to go wild nutso on anything now. This is a Gen G team that I don't see slowing down anytime soon. Until right brings out a nerf hammer and completely changes the meta right before worlds that seems like the only thing that's possibly gonna slow down this gen g roster but it was well hands laughing good vibes all around at the lck because your boy teddy is also having a good time on the rift not only is he dancing on the cam but he's putting forward immaculate kaisa performances back to back mvps for teddy surrounded by four young guys on drx we get a vintage performance out of him uh, this is the master splinter. He's seen what it worked for Faker with T1 and the young guns. He's trying it with DRX and a little bit of different results. Let's just say for, for Teddy Not so far this year. Not quite the same year. talent level around Teddy, but. Today, 
absolutely felt like he was rocking the T1 jersey with the way that we saw him performing uh, out there in the position and certainly creating the advantages that you need to be getting if you are this DRX team. You know, a little bit closer in that first game. Game two, mega advantages given over to the DRX side thanks to a little clean 12 kill performance from your boy Teddy. 12 kills and deathless on that Kaisa. And he was popping in, being aggressive, kind of starting some of these team fights as well. But I'm here for a young gun DRX run. Redemption, rejuvenation for DRX. They're two and one. It's still very early, but I feel like sometimes DRX here like five or six weeks in before they get two wins. It's so crazy with the LCK and especially having titanic teams like where Gen G is right now in their performance. T1 as an organization and then knowing kind of the casting group that is trying to chase them down for that top area of the LCK easier to get lost in that picture for the final playoff spot is an important one to check in with DRX Teddy with this type of performance continued improvement for the young players that is absolutely one of the teams that could make an interesting angle for that last spot in the playoffs we're always looking. It seems to be a revolving door of that sixth squad in terms of playoff push for the LCK. So why not slot DRX in there potentially with a lot of these hyped up young guys? And of course, Mr. Teddy. Always love to see him doing well on the rift. We're so many weeks into the LPL and I feel like we're not really talking about the rookie of the split MVP level galactic brain jungler. Milky Way. That's probably because Fun Plus Phoenix started one and two and dropped some games, but bounced back in a big way against EDG, against the world champion JJ in the jungle. Viego nearly gets a quadra kill to clinch the game, and then we get a Diana jungle performance in the third game. You'd love to see this guy when he's playing well. Oh, man, it has been too long, I think, since we've had a little chance to, to talk about Milky Ways and have a real reason to be talking about Milky Ways and the rest of FPX. This is one of those teams that you were really trying to build some excitement for last split and eventually didn't get all the way through to where I think a lot of people's aspirations or hopes for. And what we saw from Milky Ways individually was one of those other parts of it head into this split and that one and two start as you laid out wasn't necessarily so egregious or bad in the performances that you would put them into the fraud watch as a couple of the other squads that we have watched in the LPL but this was a needed performance a needed stamp a needed exclamation point in their gameplay was this series against EDG and specifically that game three getting that Diana performance from Milky Ways again, showing that angle, showing that difference maker that he is out there on the rift, but makes you believe in stuff that is capable for FPX to make that charge up into the top tiers of the LPL. Should still very much uh, prove they got the same record as EDG now, but I think based on spring, FPX should 100% be the second seed coming out of this group. Want to see Milky Way go toe-to-toe -to -toe against some of these other top dogs. This is the same roster that we got from spring that were so hyped up and then kind of fizzled out when playoffs rolled around. But listen, AP Jungler, Carry Meta, is there anyone else you want to see in the LPL but Milky Way playing these? No way, man. And I do want to give a quick check-in and shout-out to the other guys here with FPX, of course. Care in the mid lane, really another performance in another series where he was relatively stable. And then you go down to the bottom lane, and Dotcom, another guy, again, talked about him many times over the course of his career, you know, the ups and downs of it. Korean Rising Ezreal. Up again. Korean Ezreal. Rising up again, getting that Korean Ezreal play. These are the type of things you got to keep track of when you're looking at a team like FPX moving up the stocks in the LPL. Also had life playing a pike. Pick we don't see very often. Remember, he was popping off with that support rumble last split. So when he gets to cook a little bit in the bot lane in terms of picks, then that's definitely when FPX is flying on all cylinders. And 2-2, two and two, we're not getting excited yet, but excited to see Milky Way play at a high level. Everyone's excited when you get to see your boy Reckless on T1 Academy pulling out a five-man Nico alt to clinch the game for the boys. And listen... He was playing well at times, the bot lane uh, in the spring split for T1 Challengers, but they didn't have a great split. Now they're starting out 4-0, and zero, and Reckless is playing like this, and all of a sudden some heads are turning towards them. 
Oh, yes, sir. Your boy Reckless down for T1 Academy and making it happen on the Nico. You got it right. The five man ultimate coming across the board. It's one of those moments, one of those plays that it happens. And it's kind of like, you know, those uh, commercials for the Super Bowl where they're flipping out and the chips and them fly everywhere and everyone's drink spills. That's how hype it is to see that type of thing happen. Reckless delivers on it for T1 Academy and he's been delivering more than just the signature play. A, a big moment like that for the team. He has been so steady and consistent for them and really an incredible veteran presence for this young academy squad specifically for me the bottom lane with smash of course really think that this is going to turn a lot of people's heads not just in the western scene for league of legends i think possibly in the lck out in the east making some uh, people turn around and check out what's going on and let's be honest he's had a pretty exponential growth in terms of looking comfortable as a support and adding champions to that pool early on in spring it was like yeah this dude's great on senna no kidding he's played it as an ad carry but now you're seeing him make game winning plays on nico and he seems to be thriving in the environment the whole team has got the fanatic logo synced for aces and winning the game so the vibes seem pretty good around t1 academy right now and now we could legitimately maybe be talking about reckless on an lck team in 2025, imagine the first import over in there is Reckless. That would have seemed absolutely bonkers, I think, at the start of the year, even with the kind of the positivity and understanding about this move and that it was a legitimate one from both sides with the T1 Academy as well for Reckless making this change, making this uh, alt you know, alteration in his career. Absolutely, the way the performances have gone, I think that one of these LCK teams at the very least should consider the opportunity that is presented in bringing Reckless to your team and what it provides, not just from the outside source, uh, that, right? You know, going, oh yes, we're bringing in attention and, and interest and then fans from the Western side. You have to be looking at the performance because yes, I think one of the questions will still be about how fluent you can be in Korean and the communication aspect for a team, but it's been more than good enough for the T1 Academy and Reckless has maintained his commitment into improving and investing in that side of his career as well. I'm all for it, man. These type of plays, I am a fan. I think there's middle tier playoff teams in both the LCK and the LEC that for 2025, I'm calling, I'm inquiring about Reckless because it's not just, you know, the fan base bump that you're getting from him. He's legit. This isn't just like a facade that he's there to boost your sales and isn't actually good. He's been one of the best supports in the entire challenger scene and has, quite frankly, earned a starting spot for next year. I think one of the best things that you can look at it as well is understanding what type of player, where he is as a person in his career as well. That veteran status and really that mentorship that he has provided to the whole T1 Academy but his bot lane partner in Smash is one of the best things that I look at from what has been going on with T1 Academy. And that would be a big selling point to me as well to a bunch of these other LCK teams that would be in that range, that zone, looking for that improvement, looking for an X factor to make something different. Reckless is it. He's right there. He's in your backyard. Take a look. Take a look. And uh, I mean, it'd be a treat. We know he's much more of a leadership veteran uh outspoken communicative guy now even though he's been doing it in a different language in korea so excited to see what his career brings for him in 2025 we're getting hyped up for week two in the lcs week what is it three four in the lec so today we're doing a little special game we're gonna be playing who am i aka guess who basically i'm gonna read some stats and mark here is gonna try and guess who this person is we're gonna start in the lcs i had seven solo kills in week one, seven solo kills, which is obviously the most in the league, but also the highest deaths per game among my role in week one. Who am I, Mark? Oh, man, I don't even know where I want to look in this one and for the positions, the players. Uh, uh, most, you know, seven solo kills. Uh, you know, giving it up. Hmm. Hmm. Give me, give me a range. Give me a range to work with. Here. I'll tell you it's a solo lane a solo okay yeah no i i let me tell you i was seven I was already, solo kills it wasn't a support <laughs> i wasn't guessing support i you know i entertained the bottom lane just briefly 
Okay, and then maybe jungle, but no. It has got to be the solo lanes. You know what? I'll roll the dice on, on a young Canadian. I'll give me General Sniper. I'll ah, pick the dice. That's a good guess because my man had way crazy solo kills uh, in week one or in spring, but it's actually the Yapton himself, <sighs> APA. He's getting the solo kills, but he was also dying the most among mid laners in uh, week I, one. I had, a, I had a feeling it might have been APA too because I was remembering, yes, as the pop offs that had more than enough plays to think that, okay. A couple of those could be those solo kills that we're talking about. Also, uh, yes, caught out more than a few times, making sure he was That's dying. just the confidence, you know, the double-edged sword. Of it. Playing on that edge, and absolutely didn't matter ultimately because whenever he was on that edge and towing over it, the rest of Team Liquid was there to bail him out, make sure that they had their strong performances. Oh, oh, yapped in America coming in through on that one. Another tasty one. I had the highest gold per minute, CS per minute, and a 26 KDA, which was the second highest in the league in week one. Who am I? Okay, so it's someone popping off down there. Let's think. It's probably got to be a bot laner, I'm feeling, man. <laughs> Obviously, a team that was winning in week one. Yeah, so. I was going to say. It's got a, I'm, smell, I'm smelling a little 100 Thieves action here. Okay. Okay. Thinking. Hmm. Your boy, 100 Thieves Meech rolling on it. You know, his his KDA was approaching that. He had a pretty insane uh, KDA, but it's a surprise. It's your boy, Tactical, on Immortals. 26 KDA, most gold in the league. I'm glad to get caught out by that one for your boy, Tactical, and for Immortals. Because that, I think, is one of the signs of that wake-up call that the rest of the LCS is going to need about Immortals. Because this is one of those teams did get their matchup, of course, against Shopify Rebellion. Not the biggest thing in the world type of thing, absolutely. But seeing the way that they play, it's getting to hear that this is the tactical performance and stats right there, checked in with how they look under Coach Anero. I'm willing to roll in through on Immortals, making that charge up the rank. Uh, rankings and shaking things up in the LCS this summer split. Trying to stat, uh, pad those stats with some Ziggs performances. That's the way to do it <laughs> as tactical. Easy turrets with those satchels. Last one for the LCS. I was the only player with 100% kill participation in week one, but also had the highest average deaths at 5.5. Oh, baby. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's so hard. I feel like it's impossible to to not want to jump in on one of the Dignitas Cloud9 players from the series that we saw with them and the possibilities. But I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I want to move through the jungle is the big one where I'm feeling on this type of pick. Hmm. 100% KP is hard in one game, let alone to get it in multiple. Oh, yeah, I'll roll on Umpty. I'll roll on Umpty. I think that he's maybe getting in, in in the action for Team Liquid. Lots of kills were happening in that FlyQuest series. Yeah, I, I respect the general being involved in the play, but we're going bot lane. We're going he for NRG. Whoa. Maybe what? the kill participation was only what? six kills, but he was there for all of them. Oh, that's, that's not fair. That is the trip up <laughs> question of trip up questions right there misleading misleading on that one i will it's one of those ones where maybe you know okay gotta give a, a little shout out to who he because certainly amongst the dark things and bad things to talk about with nrg one of them has been questioning whether the change from ignar to who he was the right move for the roster well still probably a very legitimate question to ask but at the very least the performance the contribution in what happened for nrg was there 100% from who he is, as we've learned with this stat? <laughs> Maybe they rely on him more than we think if he needs to be there for every single one of their kills. Uh, over to the LEC now. This is a team one, not a player. So a team, I'm the only team yet to kill a Rift Herald, and we have the highest deaths per game in the league. Uh, well... Normally, you're, you're looking in that bottom tier right now. You're kind of getting comfortable with a, a team like Rogue, maybe K-Corp thrown in there. 
I'm feeling the Mad Lions on this one. I think they have certainly been poor enough to, to be fitting of, the, of this one. Got bad news for you, LEC fans. This is G2 Esports. Oh! Ooh! <laughs> Extra painful! You roll through those three teams that you're possibly thinking. You're thinking of just the bottom of the barrel. How bad can it be? They've got nothing going for them. And it's G2 Somehow Esports. they've got three wins with the most deaths in the league and not even killing a Herald. They're able to kill top Esports, but not a Herald. Not happening here <laughs> out here in Summer Split for the LEC. All right, last one for Europe. I am back to a player, the only mid laner who is top three in damage percentage, first blood percentage, CSD at 15, kills per game, and kill participation. The only mid laner top three in all those categories. That's an impressive performance. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's lay that one out there right out the way. I'm going to take my shot here on Humanoid. Give me Humanoid because I think that he has been a very impactful player. He has been very strong early on in this good start and bounce back, revenge bounce back for Fnatic. How about it being Rookie of the Year candidate Jackies for Giant X? I did have a little twinkle going. It could be Jackies because he has been pretty nuts I ruled it out because my brain just went, okay. They're not winning these looking, games, but he's looking great. Right, right, but I got a lot, you know, I was looking for a more established answer, something to back it up type of thing with what we've been going on. And of course, with Fnatic playing their way, they went. That's where I went. But wow, that is a pretty awesome one to hear about your boy Jackie's. A shining beacon of light for the majority of the year so far for Giant X. This is something we'll probably revisit throughout the split, throughout some of these stats, uh, because, you know, we'll, we'll make sure Mark's able to get a few more I, next time. <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta He's get warm enough, man. He's warm enough. We're 0-5 oh, oh here early on, a couple of a close little darts around it, but hey, you gotta get that one. We'll give some softballs next time. But that is it today for League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties. Thanks for hanging out, and may the good vibes be with you.